Hello everyone, welcome to part 3 of the videos on uh, XYZ tracker plugin from ASI for Micromanager. In our earlier videos, we talked about how to install Micromanager, how to uh, install the plugin itself, and carry out some basic configuration uh, that makes the usage of the plugin easier. In this tutorial, I'm going to be mostly focusing on the XY tracking. Uh, there was an audio video for Z tracking as well. Uh, let's begin. So, so we got Micromanager here and as I mentioned earlier, Micromanager, uh, the plugin doesn't have that much control of the camera. It can set the camera in, uh, it can set the trigger mode of the camera it can capture images from the camera but it doesn't have any other control of the camera or it can't control other aspects of the camera so before you launch the plugin use the live view and make sure the video is coming from the camera is looking good so here the image is pretty saturated so i'm going to drop the exposure time okay i'm also going to drop the led illuminator intensity and I'm gonna just run the gain at auto just to be sure everything's good. Uh, the frame rate is still low. That's because um, the image size is big. I'm gonna use the mode one function. Uh, that's because the at uh, the frame rate was three set three frames per second because the video size was 2048 by 1536. Now you can get faster frame rate even at this resolution, but for that you need to use USB 3 and not USB 2, at least in the case of my camera, which is a point gray chameleon 3 camera. So for that reason, I'm gonna drop the resolution and I'm also going to reduce the pixel uh, bit to 8 bits. Now let's try again. Now, oh well, that's something screwed up. And I think that's because the trigger mode's not right, correctly set up. I'm going to just put it to internal. This is a quirk of the point, uh, point gray's uh, gray camera or uh, Chameleon 3 camera. I'm sure this is not going to be the issue in your camera. It's just a thing with the point gray device adapter. So frame rate's good. Uh, resolution's good enough. As you see, this bin, it's binning and it did not reduce the frame or the field of view. It's not cropping. It's just the binning. Um, so yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Okay gonna set the gain back to manual because I don't want uh, yeah, fluctuations in the intensity as we are uh, doing uh, XY tracking. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, my uh, experiment or test bed, which is an ASI RAM microscope, has two optical paths. One of the optical paths has the tunable lens and this point gray camera. And then there's a second optical path, which is uh, meant uh, for the main data acquisition camera. And as a stand-in, I'm using a Sente camera. Uh, in your case, it's gonna be a much more high-end camera. And it's important that uh, both the optical paths have a similar field of view and are par focal with each other. If they are not, they're gonna cause problems. Um, like for example, if the field of view is not overlapping, then the plugin's gonna track the feature with this camera, and this is not gonna be in view of your main data acquisition camera. And similar problems with uh, Z focusing too. So you wanna have those resolved, uh, have your uh, optical paths aligned uh, before we begin this tutorial. Okay, um, I guess in this, um, you're not, okay. I'm so sorry, I'm just wondering whether I should keep this window open or close it entirely. Okay, I'm gonna start the plugin now. 
just to be sure everything's running i'm just gonna hit it and see how it's good this is what we're supposed to see two blurry images and up or down and then um, the main data acquisition of course this is being run outside of micromanager uh, the micromanager hasn't have control of this camera in your case you might use it with micromanager there's no harm in doing i think micromanager supports multiple cameras no issue there okay just gonna stop it uh i'm gonna go through some of the settings again so there are this part of the screen the left hand side uh, is for settings here's where you set the main acquisition settings like which stage to use to correct uh, correct for x and y change uh, this which uh, axis or which stage to use a z stage to use to correct for focus um, the, the name of the tunable lens and your tracking camera okay. uh, for x and y tracking a tunable lens is not really that important um, it's not really using the ditter images uh, to, for, for tracking like I mean you can ditter the tunable lens but it's not going to use the down image it's only going to use the up image for tracking so there's an option if you want to do z tracking and x and y tracking you can um, you can run it this way that is with the tunable lens dithering or you can run it in a free running mode where the tunable lens is not okay uh, as you see there's a uh, issue here the, the image did not come up and that's because uh, the trigger mode is not set correctly here and uh, it's an issue with the device adapter and in my experience setting the trigger to internal seems to fix it so let's try again um, let me try software and start it here hmm Let's see, live. Okay, we're watching uh, a troubleshoot live. Okay, something micromanager wasn't able to open up the live view with the camera. There was a timeout. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, that's working it's the state of the camera and it's only to do with point gray cameras it's just the state of the device adapter um, yeah so if you run into this problem again just try setting the trigger mode back to internal that seems to fix it uh, it happens when you are going from free running mode to external trigger mode and back so yeah now when i press this start acquisition plugin is able to get videos from the camera and as you notice there's no down image that's because the tunable lens is not deterring so if you're just interested in x and y tracking this is a good mode to be okay <laughs> there's a lag you're noticing um i wonder why um okay okay they're mostly they're mostly okay now there was a lag that to begin with okay as you see there's no z uh, focusing going on so there's no focus score being generated and since we have not yet started xy tracking uh, there's no x and y processing time so right now everything should be running pretty fast okay yeah so pick your x y stage pick your z stage the tunable lens although for x and y doesn't matter but if you're doing z tracking then you might want to have that selected correctly binning uh, the same binning that uh, uh, is is applied to the image before the focus course calculator it's also used for x and y shift um up image uh, scale that is the size of this ui so if you wanted uh, something bigger uh, so that you can better see the features uh, you can use that option there 
um, 0 0.5 is usually good enough for me. Dittering you, uh, doesn't matter since we're running it in free running mode. And uh, let's go to skip Z. Let's just go to X and Y. The X and Y lets us pick the algorithms that we want to use for X and Y shift. Um, we are mostly going to be using LK and mean shift in this case. Um, there's a write-up on these other uh, algorithms on the ASI wiki. Uh, you can get to the wiki by pressing the help section manual button. It's going to open up your uh, default browser and go to the ASI imaging doc ASI plugin. And this is the page on the ASI's doc site for the plugin. And pretty much everything covered in this video is written up in this page. Details on what each uh, option does and controls do, what the buttons do. Everything's written here. Please uh, refer it at your leisure. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, let's start and let me show you an example with uh, LK. So LK uses points to track the image. Uh, these, uh, you begin by left clicking on the image uh, on a feature you want to track and the algorithm or the routine, the LK routine runs uh, runs a uh, runs a routine on the feature or the image around the feature to pick out something called corners corners are pixels that have intensity variation in more than one direction and uh, this is uh, what the LK algorithm uses to track the sample so the way it works is uh, the uh, routine takes two images, two consecutive images from the video, passes the location of the corners in image one and the routine spits out the location of the pixels or the corners in image two. Um, and so that's how we know how the objects has moved. And uh, so that's the features we just clicked and now that's tagged. Now as I move the uh, stage with the joystick, as you see, the tag is still uh, sta it's stationary and it's following the sample. So, yeah, I can uh, pick out points further away from the object by changing the track radius. This is in pixels, so I can change the radius and now when I click left click on an image um, the points are picked at a further uh, further at a, in a bigger radius so if you so here if you're not interested in how these features move uh, you might want to try a tighter radius and just get going by the way uh, let me begin this again so when you start an acquisition the tracker is inactive. There's no X and Y shift being tracked. Uh, the tracker is in idle state. So when you left click, in this case, you're passing, the plugin is telling the routine uh, reference where, or the reference pixels or the feature it likes to track. The track, the plugin is, uh, the tracker is activated. And now there is a uh, processing, and it's processing, and that's the processing time. In this case, it's only uh, less than a millisecond or a millisecond. And the plugin is in ready state. It's not as I'm moving the joystick. It's not fixing anything. It's just tracking. And as I'm moving, it's able to pick up shift, but it's not applying any correction yet. And to begin tracking. You want to put, 
you want to engage x and y lock so and uh, when you press lock now the plugin has taken control of the stage and it's keeping it uh, and here I have it set to move to center so it's bringing the feature into center of view so let's try that again let me pick out a feature here and now I can begin the lock by clicking this button or I can right click and the plugin brings the sample or the feature to the center of view I can add more points and what the plugin is now trying to do is keep these fe features as close to center of view as possible. I can add offsets. I'm increasing an X offset um, and I'm able to move it away or I'm able to remove it. Yeah. So that's that okay so just like there's a calibration for Z uh, there's a calibration for X and Y uh, I've done it before so when I click locked it kind of worked but in when you first run it the, the plugin doesn't know the orientation of the camera to the stage your camera and your stage could be 90 degrees apart there could be a mirror in the optical path that causes an inversion. So a positive X might look like negative X and things like that. So for those scenarios, uh, there is a calibration routine. And when you run the routine, let's see, the calibration routine doesn't run when you're in lock state. So let me right click again and come back to ready state. Now let me run the calibration routine and as you see the image quick moved quickly let me try that again and let me actually put it in this window because the calibration results are printed here so what the stage did is move five microns in X and it saw how the pixel shifted so when it moved in positive five microns in X it saw six or seven pixels change in negative X of the image and then for Y it saw about yeah about two to three pixels change in Y okay so ideally these should be about the same uh, just in a different but here it's half as much so I don't know what's going on um, it's probably better to run the XY calibration with a different routine than LK. Uh, let me, sorry, let me pick face correlation. Face correlation, there's more information about it in the manual. It's looking at the entire image and calculating frame shifts between the images uh, of the entire image. It's not just looking at a certain feature, it's looking at the entire frame. So let me run again with face correlation so let's try that um, let me click that to start okay now it's ready and start XY Calib okay oh, okay looks like it didn't get a good result okay there we go okay it looks like it's still half which is kind of odd uh, but we'll go with it so it uh, does the calibration, it figures out X, uh, what X, uh, six pixels change in X means to stages travel, what four pixels change in the, in the frame uh, mean to the Y axis of the stage. And with that, it creates, uh, it fills up these matrix. And so it lets the uh, plug in know how to compensate for X and Y shift in the image what direction the stage axis or which axis of the stage to move to compensate at any given time in the four in these four uh, settings uh, only two of them will be uh, having information the rest will be zero um, 
so yeah the gain x y gain is like the z gain it's just the uh, gain factor applied to the error uh, then applied to the sent to the stage to correct it uh, so pixel error into a uh, gain and then uh, that's the gives the velocity the stage is uh, commanded to move by the plugin to correct the errors uh, so let's uh, try again see how our calibration worked so I'm actually gonna do face correlation again uh, and it's in ready state and I clicked here so that's my feature to track and now when I right click I'm gonna lock and if everything worked right this feature was gonna go to the center of the screen which it did that's good now I'm gonna click here that's gonna become my feature to track and now the stage is brought that in how about this location here and same okay good so our images is calibrated and we are kind of tracking so everything's good okay so okay let's try a different routine mean shift uh, so mean shift works a bit differently than both LK and face correlation what mean shift does is it turns an image into a, a binary image and uh, using a threshold value set here and then it draws a rectangle around the feature we first passed it uh, by left clicking and it tries to find the center of mass uh, of everything inside this rectangle and moves the rectangle uh, until uh, uh, the center of mass is at the center of the rectangle and then uh, say the next in the next frame this object has moved it does the routine again calculates the center of mass and uh, shift the rectangle and from that from seeing the change in position of the rectangle from frame 1 to frame 2 it figures out how much uh, uh, relative mo movement has been between the two frames so let's try it out uh, this is a bright field image so I'm gonna have the bright field checkbox selected here I'm just gonna click here that's good, good feature to track it draws the rectangle using this radius here I can increase the size of this rectangle as you see when I increased its side it was big enough to touch this blob here and it jumped off here let me try bringing it back to the first blob yep it's not doing it I can probably move it to this guy here and it jumped onto here I can probably move it here but since these guys are kind of close um, if I want to just track this blob I probably need to give it a smaller rectangle and let's see here okay now it's happy staying there I can also change how the binary image is done uh, by changing the threshold value so let me uh, by increasing the threshold value I'm adding more features in we probably don't want to do that we want to reduce the features we want to see so yeah now it's our blobs intact and there's less detail so this is the image we began with and that's what uh, we are seeing after binary processing okay we are in ready state and check out how the processing time it's barely anything this is a very fast routine okay I'm gonna right click to lock and now the image is brought to the center okay uh, mean shift routine is pretty robust so I can change the feature I want to track on the fly so if I click here that's the feature and now that's it's trying to keep that in the center of the screen if this was a moving specimen the stage would be moving to keep the sample in view by the way this is the stage position uh, it's only updated uh, when uh, we are in lock stage let's try that again yep as I'm moving the feature I want to track it's trying to keep it in the center of the screen I'm 
intentionally changing here. I unfortunately don't have a, a moving specimen, so I'm making do with a static uh, sample here. Okay. So yeah, that's mean shift. It's a pretty robust algorithm. So clicking uh, toggle XY lock unlocks it, yeah. And uh, clicking uh, XY ready toggle brings it back to idle state and we are back to the default image. So that's XY tracking. Uh, color sh margin have to do with the uh, color uh, tracking routines erode and dilate uh, also are related to that. Um, so let me show you what happens when you don't have bright field selected. So now it's not doing an inversion. Basically, uh, uh, yeah. So on a bright field, uh, back to ready again, on a, in a bright field image, the background is bright and the features are dark. But in a fluorescing image, the background is dark and the feature is bright. So there's an inversion needed before we turn it into binary and the bright field uh, checkbox helps us do that. The maximum XY runaway is the maximum distance, the stages or the plugin is allowed to be moved by the plugin when it's locked. And if the uh, this distance is exceeded, uh, plugin stops and puts the X and Y tracker state back to ready. Uh, move center and X, Y offset is, is something we talked about. Uh, let me show you what happens with X, Y center checked. If I want to track this feature and I right click, that feature is being brought to the center of the screen. But if I don't have it selected and I want to track this feature, it's and it's locked. It keeps it there. It's going to keep the feature there. Even if the feature tries to move, the plugin is going to try to bring it back to here. So it's a preference. If you want to just track the feature where it is, leave this and not selected. And when you do want to keep it in the center, bring this back. So this can be checked and unchecked on the fly, no worries. Okay, that's about it. Um, that's X and Y tracking. Uh, oh yeah, just before we leave, if you want to save these settings, you can use the save settings button and it loads the settings in, in an XML file. So let me say example and save it and uh, the files were uh, being saved in my document. Let's check out how the file looks. So example, it's an XML file and it carries pretty much all the settings uh, that can be adjusted by the user including what camera, what Z uh, stage we are using, what Z algorithm, what X and Y algorithm, uh, pretty much everything is saved into this file. And when you want to load it back, you hit the load button, pick the file you want and open. But now you're getting a box that says that the plugin is going to close. That's because for the settings to get loaded into all the uh, settings controls, uh, the plugin has to restart. So just click OK, plugin shuts down, and then you can bring it, turn it on again. And this time the plugin's gonna load with all the settings that were in the file. So yeah. Uh, unlike Z, Z algorithm, whenever you change the Z, uh, focusing algorithm, you want to run Z calibration again. With an X and Y, you can change the algorithms. You don't need to run the calibration again. The calibration, or I'm sorry, the stage X and Y calibration is only needed if you uh, change your objectives because that changes the magnification. So uh, it's, it's to do with the X, Y gain here. Or if you change the 
camera or the stage or put the camera on a different photo port or rotate the, the camera at a different orientation whenever you think the the orientation between the camera and the stage has changed run the x and y calibration it only takes a few seconds so whenever you're in doubt run it again it's you're not going to be uh, it's never a bad idea so yeah that's for x uh, x and y tracking uh, oh yeah uh, <laughs> i'm sorry this video keeps getting longer let me just show you x and y tracking while z tracking is on it is definitely possible both of them running both of them together just wanted to show you how it looks like so have uh, free running unselected um, I'm running I'm getting the my two images up image down image um, let me just turn on uh, well let me just run Z calibration never hurts right and lock now as I move the stage with a joystick uh, my Z stage is changing to st stay uh, put the keep the sample in focus with respect to the main data acquisition camera say I want to track this um, this node here uh, I have uh, mean shift selected I'll select that uh, as you see now uh, uh, this image is now outputting the output of the X and Y tracker I can mess with the radius size I can change the threshold None of this is as affecting focus scoring because the focus scoring is done with the image coming back from the camera, not the image coming from the X and Y tracker. So you don't have to worry about messing with these settings while Z tracking is on. As you see, Z tracking is still running. It's still making its correction. It's happy. So now I say I want to center on this blob here I can just right click and it brings it here so right now both X and Y Z are locked and you're able to get the positions for all of them okay yeah so yeah X and Y and Z tracker can both run at the same time no worries there uh, so that's about it uh, let me know if you have any questions um, and feel free to experiment and explore the plugin uh, we welcome any suggestions you may have uh, on how we could improve the plugin. Thank you so much. Bye.